Thanks for joining us for Understanding Real Estate with Realtor Becky Cobb of West Cobb Alliance, part of the Reese Nichols Real Estate Group in the Osho. So Becky, what is the difference in an individual real estate agent who is working to sell a home and a real estate team like the West Cobb Alliance? I'd say with the team, you've got some extra people that are going to help keep the program rolling. Um, individual agents, I started out as an individual agent, and they do a great job. And it really is just a matter of how you as a realtor want to work. But I have found that working with a team, I feel so blessed to work with a team. And it overall allows us to those people who have specialties to focus on those specialties and also uh, to have really good counsel. You know, the scriptures do say that there is benefit in the multitude of counselors. And that is one of the things that I have found in working with a team is having those other voices that can guide me when I'm feeling a little stumped. So that's a benefit of working with a real estate team. So Becky, how do you go about buying a house if you've got to sell the house you're in? Well, you really have to hold your mouth just right and click your heels three times. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of these things that, yes, it is a tricky thing. That's why you need a professional real estate agent to help guide you through the process, because um, there are a lot of pitfalls in that. It's great if you have the uh, buying power that maybe you can get a bridge loan or some other financing mechanism that would allow you to go ahead and purchase prior to getting your house sold. If not, there is a process. It's called contingency with uh, of sale. And uh, you can put an offer on a house. And there is a possibility that if they find a buyer that can go ahead and purchase without selling a home, you might get kicked out. But if you don't try, you don't know. And we are getting in a market these days where we're seeing more options for that type of a purchase. So don't give up. Hire a professional real estate agent to represent you for your sale and as a buyer's agent, and they will guide you through the process. So Becky, this morning, uh, if you're trying to buy a house that also need to sell the one that you're in, what are some temporary living options out there while you make that transition? That's a really good question, Luke. So it's not always as easy as we're ready to make that move to that next house and we want to sell this house. It's too small for us. It's too big for us, whatever it is. And then maybe the perfect home that you want to purchase isn't available. So what should you do? I would recommend that you do look into maybe we're going to rent for a little while. Maybe we will uh, live with relatives for a while. Maybe, you know, there are some Airbnbs in the area that will do long-term rentals without the commitment of, say, a six-month or a year lease, something like that. Um, you've got to sometimes be willing to bend to get to your ultimate goal, to what you actually want. So if you have the perfect buyer lined up for your house and you just don't have the perfect house lined up to buy, I'd still say sell it and go through a few tough months and you'll end up on the other end in your goal. So for today, Becky, if somebody is wanting to sell their home, is there a particular best time of the year to put it on the market? You know, look, traditionally, people always think it's the summer months. But in reality, in our part of the world here in southwest Missouri, we have good weather. Uh most of the year, I mean, we have January is pretty miserable and sometimes February is too, but we have decent weather and really anytime the weather is decent, we can get out and show properties, properties look good enough to sell. And so when you need to make that move, that's the time to sell it. We do not have a strong, oh yeah, July is the only time to sell. That's, that's not the way it really works in our market. We seem to stay a pretty even pattern throughout the majority of the year. And actually, sometimes January have been some of our biggest months. So I say when you need to do it, that's the best time to sell. So Becky, some of us are seeing uh, a lot of questions in the news right now about uh, lawsuits and commissions related to real estate. Are there changes on the horizon to how that will work going forward? We're starting to see some changes. Of course, as of August 17th, we no longer can advertise to other real estate agents through our MLS system what compensation we're going to be paying a buyer's agent. Basically, I do think in our market, at least for the foreseeable future, most of us are operating as we have for years in offering a compensation to a buyer's agent. And that's what I uh, hope to see continue. Uh, traditionally, we charge our seller a commission and we split that between the buyer's agent and the seller's agent. 
the recent lawsuit is trying to separate that practice. And in some states, that's been separated for a long time. However, we know that our local buyers really don't have the ability, for the most part, to borrow extra money to pay their buyer's agent. So in order to get a transaction together, I still say our best option is to continue to keep that as a seller's expense. If you would like to know more about understanding real estate, you may contact Becky Cobb at 417-592-3245 of the West Cobb Alliance, your Realtors for Life. Find out more on the web at neoshow.homes.